Praise the Lord. All right, no announcement right now. Pursuing, we will call it that way. Somebody say pursue. pursue. Say it again. Pursuing. pursuing. I told you starting the church, uh, the service of Luke 128. It say greeting, favored one. You know, when we were coming, driving, God just put that word in my heart and said, I am favored. He, he talked to me. <laughs> I am favored. So I come also to tell you, you are favored. I didn't say you are my favorite. I say you are favored. Amen. Say to your neighbor, you are favored. Yeah, we are favored. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. One day, I was on a marketplace in those days, 2000, not 1999, on the marketplace selling electronics as a sell representative. And I arrived in that place. People knew so much more than I. I was wondering, how are we going to make it? You know, when you get in a place and you feel that your ignorance is bigger than your knowledge, you disqualify yourself before you then you enter there. And I think this verse was right for me. I felt God greeted me and said, Feather one, I am with you. In other words, don't exclude the favor factor. If you want to evaluate me, if you want to know my worth, after you calculated everything that I can show you, you still need to add a dosage of favor to it. You understand? Your worth is not what you have in your account. After you calculate your real estate, after you calculated all your saving, after you calculated all your investment, you still need to add a dosage of favor upon it because it's the favor of the Lord that will balance your equation. When you get in a place where you feel limited, where you feel you are coming short, God's favor, when it comes upon the life of a person, you will no longer remain in the place of forgetfulness. Am I speaking to somebody? You will have to move from where people have locked you in the dark so that you can be usher in the place of celebration. I prophesy today, because of the favor of the Lord, your life will be celebrated in Jesus' mighty name. Your life will not be tolerated. Your life will be celebrated. Tell your neighbor, my life will not be tolerated. My life will be celebrated. Hallelujah. Don't exclude the favor factor when you come to assess my life. Don't exclude the favor factor when you calculate what I'm worth. Because of favor, my life has ceased to be tolerated. I have entered the realm to be celebrated. And that's your portion. That's the portion of your children in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Judges chapter 8 verse 4. Judges 8 4. Quickly. The Bible says, Then Gideon and the 300 men who were with him came to the Jordan and crossed over, weary yet pursuing. Somebody say, weary, weary. Yet, yet pursuing. Yes. Say it again, weary, weary. but yet, yet pursuing. I want to talk to you today. When Joshua, not Gideon, when Joshua arrived at the Jordan, the tide of the Jordan was at the highest level. So you don't bargain with that. You cannot feel like, okay, I'm just going to try to cross through. No. The tide was at the high level. And the Bible added, the tide was at the high level and it was the season of harvest. Did you hear that? And it was the season of harvest. How can the impossibility be so high and at the same time, there is an opportunity to, to bless your life? The tide was high, but it was a time of a harvest. Now, Gideon come to the same place. The tide is not as high as it was with Joshua. And it was not a season of harvest. And God still told him the same thing. He said, cross over. I feel cross point were in the season for you and your family and individual that is time to cross over. Somebody shouts, cross, cross over. Say it, cross over. cross over. Tell your neighbor, it is time for you to cross over. 
the reason you need to cross over is because where you are is good. But on the other side, there is something better than what you have been experiencing at this season. The reason you get a crossover is because where you've been, you've been there for too long. No matter how good it was, something greater is on the other side. and will not remain any longer on this side of the Jordan. It is time for me to cross on the other side. Cross over. We are crossing over, church. God spoke to us prophetically that times are changing. And he gave a vision of a bird that has two colors. And that was from Consuela. A bird that has two colors was speaking of a stork. Somebody say stork. A stork is a big bird. It's not a small bird. It's a huge big bird. When the stork is in the air, you're wondering, how can this bird fly? It's too heavy. It cannot fly. But when it gets in the air, it feels comfortable. Brothers and sisters, God is ushering us in his presence. And in his presence, that's where no matter your deformation, no matter the abuses, no matter the headaches, no matter the hell you've gone through, just because you're in his presence, you begin to glide. You don't fly anymore. You begin to glide. I prophesy a gliding season for somebody. Because when you glide, you work not. When you fly, you're battling your, your wings. But when you glide, you stretch out your wing like just Pastor Joseph. You just stretch out your wings like that. And you let the wind take you. You don't labor. You don't sweat. You begin to glide. You begin to flow with the wind. That's what the stork does. Every time the stork is mentioned, it's introduced always a new season. Always a new season. I gave you a vision of one of the people who was sharing with me and said, they saw a stork show up to them, and the stork spoke to them. And the stork said, run. The stork is one of these birds that does not sing. The stork doesn't make noise. If you see a stork is speaking, you better pay attention. And the word that came out of the mouth of the stork, it did not say worship. It didn't say pray. It just said, run. Pursue. Run with the vision. Pursue what God has said before you. Don't compromise it. This is not the time to sit back and chill out in the war is me land. It is the time to wake up. It is the time to stand up. It is the time to stir up what was not stirred up. It is the time to will for you to remove your eyes from the thing beneath and behold the thing that are above. This is not a time to sit and cry and have a self-pity party because of what you have gone through or what somebody did against you and what somebody did not do. I am speaking to your spirit. Arise and shine. Your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. I like the word cross, cross over. Is the Hebrew word abar, and it's written A-B-A-R. It just doesn't mean just to cross over. It means something causes you to go beyond as abar. Right? It's not just you running and causing, no. It is an external force. It is something causing you. It is not internal. It is something causing you for you to go beyond. God is speaking to somebody here. You need to go beyond. And what I like about it is something causing me to go beyond. It's called the movement God is introducing you to you and your family. It will be a movement sponsored by God himself. If it was you, you can do it. So God said... Stop looking for sponsors. Stop looking for people to back you up. I will sponsor the new movement I'm introducing in Crosspoint. The new movement I'm introducing to your life. I, the Lord, will sponsor your next move. I will sponsor your next step. I will sponsor. Oh, I love when God sponsored something. Thank you, Father. There is an invisible, invisible hand right now. Putting your life in motion is beyond you. Purpose is calling. Even if you don't want, you will just find yourself doing it. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because of this season, you will no longer sit back crying on your case because things that you to tie you up are broken. Seasons are changing. Seasons are changing. Seasons are changing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for sponsoring our movement. Thank you for sponsoring somebody's business here. Thank you for sponsoring somebody's ministry. Thank you for sponsoring somebody's family. Hallelujah. Now, he said they were tired but yet pursuing. The word pursue there in Hebrew is radaf. And it's written R-A-D-A-P-H. It just doesn't mean pursue. It means to get into pursuit. Or clothe with pursuit. But this is my favorite. Immersed into pursuit. Do you know what that means? Pursuing is no longer something you're chasing. Immersed in pursuit is a man and a woman who wake up to the enlightenment of purpose. And no matter what, you have to, you ought to, you got to keep running and not give up. When your clothes will pursuit, it becomes your dress. It's a garment. You wonder why some people can give up. You look at all the people who have discovered new territories. All the odd they had to go through. All the headache they have to go through. And sometimes people wonder, seriously, why can you just not take it easy? Can you find another type of calling than this one? Will you not start an easy business like everybody? Why, why do you need to always make your life so difficult and complicated? Is there not any other thing? Is there not any other way? Am I speaking to somebody this morning? Is there not any other thing to do? Seriously, why do you want to always go the highway? Just do that. Why? Why are you putting yourself in this situation? It's because you are immersed in pursuit. It's called baptized with pursuit. When you're baptized with pursuit, when you carry the garment of pursuit, even people can discourage you. People can stand against you. Nobody will clap hands for you. They will be taking the easy way. But you cannot change your path. That's the way God has made me. I have to pursue. I have to fulfill. I can't help it because I'm baptized with pursuit. I refuse to take another way. You can follow your way. But this is the one God has chosen for me. I will pursue this business. No matter how many people fail at it. No matter how many times myself I fail at it. I'm going to rise up again. Because I'm clothed with pursuit. Because I'm baptized with pursuit. Because I swim in pursuit. Hallelujah. That's what you call passion. I say passion. You give up quickly when it doesn't work. Because you're not dressed with pursuit. You give up quickly because of the first no. Because you are not baptized in pursuit. But when a man is baptized in fire or pursuit. God will say, go to the people who will kill you. And you can't say no. The children of Israel were baptized with fire or pursuit. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 14. As they stand in front of the Red Sea. And the enemy was catapulting them from the back. One is chasing there. One is standing in the front. Mission impossible. And the word of the Lord come through Moses. He said, tell the children of Israel, fear not. Mangosha. Today, you will see the salvation of the Lord. He said, tell the children of Israel, go forth. My God, how do you go forth into the sea? How do you go forth? If you are not clothed or baptized in pursuit, you will begin to reason and turn back to Moses and say, duh. Papa, da, Mozi, deliverer, don't you see the Red Sea, the sharks? Come on, what? There is no way here. What do you want we do? The Bible said in Psalm 114, verse one to three, said, "The Red Sea saw the advancement of the children of Israel, and it parted." It's not the staff of Moses who divided the Red Sea. It's the movement of the people of God. Cross point, I come to provoke you today. Stop sitting around. Rise up and go forth. Pursue. It's worth it. 
The Bible says in Hebrew that they were baptized unto the baptism of Moses. But before they get baptized to the baptism of Moses, they were baptized with pursuit. God is looking for some game changers, some crazy nuts. The world look at you and they feel like you're kaku kuku kaku kuku. Are you hear what I'm saying? It doesn't make sense. How can you sit here and your wife go to start a church three years and you're stuck here with your children without her running back and forth like a mad dog? You know what is that? It's not because, Lord, that's what I want to do. Lord, I enjoy doing that. I have no choice because when you're baptized with pursuit, sacrifice is no counting anymore. You don't count sacrifice. People who sit down start calculating all the things they will lose if they take this path. You will not achieve what God called you to do until you wake up and jump in the baptismal tank of pursuit. That's where the anointing is. That's where grace resides. That's where favor is released. Until you can pursue something to give your life for it, give up on it and pursue something else. What are you chasing after? Can you give your life to it? Can you die for it? What are you willing to sacrifice to fulfill what God has said before you? What? What are you willing? You want to live in the palace and serve God? It doesn't work that way. You cannot sleep 12 hours and build a business. You will have to sacrifice to wake up early in the morning and sleep only four hours when the other Kunta Kuntes are sleeping for three days in a row. Because you are not pursuing the same thing. There is a price to pay. You don't finish by chance. You don't finish by luck. You finish by baptism of fire. You finish by baptism of pursuit. It's not by luck. You see somebody on the top of the hill and you feel like it's an helicopter who took him there. No, it was not an helicopter. He has to take a chance to put his feet on a rock that he himself did not place there. It could go down at any moment, but he's so engaged on the goal. He's so engaged on the finish line that he doesn't see the distraction that's around him. But the church, we are like babies. God do it for me. I want to be rich in one day. Hallelujah. If you get rich in one day, your money will bury you. There is a baptism. You don't get to the top by chance. You don't pray yourself in leadership. You pay. It has to cost you something. That's right. That's right. We always want the easy way. I, how little can I pray? How little can I fast? How little can I give? How little can I be righteous? How little? And still make it. That's not pursuit. You are not baptized with pursuit. When you're baptized with pursuit... When God catapults you, you say, wow, God, is there more than this? That's the baptism. Watch me. Life is a wide open market. Are you hearing me? Yeah. It's a wide open market. You can take your cart and go to Sobeys right now. And you can walk in any aisle you want. Mm, I like Nutella. Macaroni, Gouda cheese for Burundian, Gouda cheese. Cheese for Nicaragua people, put here. Beans for Nicaragua and Burundi, put here. Steak for Canadian, put that. Bacon for Canadian. You can put anything you want. There is nobody who work in this store will come and say, oh, hold it, hold it, brother. You are taking too much stuff here. You're talking too much. Hold it. If you want, they will give you a second cut. If you want, somebody will eat and help you with a third one. Back as much as you want. It's your right. But guess what? There is a till. I said there is a till. Yes. You don't have an arrangement at the till. You do not debate at the till. You don't bargain at the till. There is no discount at the till. If the discount was not in the shelf, you won't get the discount at the till. You will pay what you need to pay. You want to eat cheese gouda? Eat choose gouda, but you have to pay for gouda cheese. And if you can't pay for gouda cheese, you just read the yellow cheese there that all of us can buy. You understand what I'm saying? There is a price for every destiny. There is a price for every purpose. There is a cost for every dream. I'm speaking to somebody. 
Mando kalakata ya badaya. Marasa. There is a price to pay. It costs Jesus Christ his life. You go to the till with all your three carts. You can even walk with star. There is no payment arrangement at the till. Sometimes we want an arrangement for payment. Can you handle the cost of your dream? Can you? Dreaming is good. But can you handle the cost of your dream? Everybody want to be somebody. But can you handle the cost to be somebody? I speak today to you. We need a fresh baptism. And it's a baptism of fire or pursuit. Amen. Refusing to give up. Regardless the seasons. Regardless the temperature. Regardless who's for me, who's against me, where I come from, who abused me, who cheated on me, who betrayed me, who hurt me. It does not matter. I think it was a Zimbabwean runner in the Olympic in Mexico. He went to represent his country. And they are going on the five kilometers. The last kilometers, he was so exhausted, the poor guy. He's running. I don't know in those days Zimbabwe was still under Mugabe or not. His short dropped to the knees. Did you see that? The short dropped to the knees. And he's holding the show with one hand. <laughs> and he's running behind, my friend. Everybody go, why are you even running? The gold medal was given already. Pass. Silver gone, bronze is gone. They are the three best runners have crossed the line already. Chilling out and people are cheering on them. Whoa. And here is our brother. <laughs> <laughs> from the motherland glory, hallelujah. Don't think everybody is from Kenya, my friend. Zimbabwe don't run like Kenyan. <laughs> Short is here, he's holding with one hand. And people are screaming in the stadium. They are making fun because <laughs> he's half naked walk running. <laughs> he didn't give a rip. He kept running. The price is being given, national anthem has been sung. <laughs> the brother is still running. <laughs> the interview my afternoon said, Brother, come on. He said, I came to finish. That's right. I came here to finish. I'm speaking that to somebody. You have come on this earth to finish. You have come to finish. You will finish your race. You will finish your race. You will finish your race. He said, I didn't come. Just for a gold, I gotta finish. Yes. Let the stadium empty, but I'm gonna finish. Yes. Me too, I'm gonna cross the line. I am beaten, but I'm gonna cross the line. I've been abused, but I'm gonna cross the line. People betray me, but I'm gonna cross the line. I'm speaking to somebody who has been let down. They let you down, but you're gonna still cross the line. They didn't believe in you, but you're gonna still cross the line. Hallelujah. I'm speaking to a man and woman. Stand up on your feet. Baptize with fire or pursuit. Not giving up. Somebody came to me yesterday and said, you look so tired. Will you be even able to stand on the pulpit? I say, I look tired. Thank you for telling me that. <laughs> when you're fueled with pursuit, you don't operate anymore from the adrenaline of human being. You are so caught up into purpose. You are so caught up into running the race. You are so caught up into pleasing God. You are so caught up into finishing what you start. Thank God I have an app that's allowed me to take my pictures and no wrinkle shows. Hallelujah. <laughs> At the end, I'll be selling that outside. <laughs> Somebody say, Pursue. Last verse, and I close. And I want to read that when you're standing. 
Thank you, Father. Are you feeling the burning? Yes. Are you feeling the burning? Yes. Hallelujah. First Samuel 30, 20. There is a spoil that bear your name. It says like this. So David had captured all the sheep and the cattle which the people drove ahead of the other livestock. And they said, what did they say? This is say it again, please. This is David's Point your finger like that and say it. This is David's say it loud. This is David's now remove David's name. This is David's so, some of you are late today on me. The snow has called you down. Are you hearing this? This is what? No, don't say my. Put your name on it. No, you don't believe it. This is the largest spot. You know, you know the way they say it? I mean, don't touch this. It's already possessed by somebody. This is a larger spoil. This is a larger ship. This is a larger triple A meat. This is a larger deliverance. This is a larger salvation. This is the larger miracle. Don't touch it. This is it. There is a spoil that bear your name. There is a blessing that bear your name. There is a miracle that bear your name. There is a deliverance that bear your name. There is a breakthrough that bear your name. Saul went to meet the prophet Samuel. And Prophet Samuel said, come, we have a banquet. When they arrive at the banquet, people have eaten. And he said to him, we have set a portion aside for you. Amen. Amen. We have set a portion aside. No, but you came late. But God knows you will make it regardless. And because God knew you will make it, he said, he might not have arrived yet, but I know he will arrive. Amen. Set the portion aside for him. Some of you, you might be still on your way coming. But God know you will arrive. God know you will make it on the other side. God know you will come to the banquet. And he said, this one, don't touch it. Amen. Yeah, but Lord, you know, there's other guests here. They need more food. They say, give them whatever. But this portion, set aside. But for who? For who? For who? Come on, tell your name. For who? For who? For who? For who? Saul arrived. And the brother said, do you know what was the portion that was set aside? It was the shoulders. Because God was about to raise him into headship. Into governing headship. You may have arrived earlier than me, but your portion may be the toe. You may have arrived earlier than me, but your portion may be this side. But as for me, a governmental order, a governmental rank, a governmental anointing, Amen. a governmental protocol. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. There is a shoulder set aside for somebody this morning and nobody can eat it. Amen. If you eat it, you will have diarrhea. Your stomach will refuse to digest it because it's not yours. It is my lift up your hand right now. God is speaking to somebody this morning. A baptism of fire. A baptism of pursuing. Clove will pursue. God is speaking to you. Do not give up, my son. Don't give up, my daughter. Do not give up. Do not let down the baton. Do not throw the towel. Yeah, they have gone ahead of you. But don't stop running at your pace. 
Don't stop running at your speed. There is a portion awaiting for you. It might not be the applause of man, but there is a portion. Yeah. Pursue. Pursue. Overtake and recover. Pursue. Overtake and recover. Pursue, don't stop. Pursue, don't stop. Pursue, don't give up. No matter the obstacles. Even if you fall back, stand up again and pursue. In the harsh times, stand up again and pursue. In the midst of tragedies, curve balls, stand up again and pursue. In the midst of discouragement, stand up again and pursue. In the midst of loneliness, abandonment, stand up again and pursue. If God is for you, who can be against you? If God stands for you, who can be against you? I have come to clothe you with a garment of fire of pursuit. I have come to baptize you afresh with a fiery garment of pursuit. Purpose is revealed. Strength is restored. Motion is given. Momentum is recovered. In the name of Jesus, you will run and you will finish it. Stand up and move. Get up and go. Arise. Shine, shine. The past is past. The future is brighter. The future is more colorful. Your tomorrow is amazing. God has great love to you and for you. Don't give up. Begin to talk to him, everybody. Begin to tell him, yeah, Lord, here I am, I'm pursuing. I rise up again and I will run and I will finish. I will not give up because you are with me. And if you are for me, who can be against me? Where the impossibility arises, your possibilities overwhelm it. All things are possible. I bless you, Lord. Worship him, Lord. Please.